guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is part one of lesson 6.2. We're going to use the law of cosines to solve oblique triangles that look like side, 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 or side, angle, side. When we're looking at the law of cosines, there's two different forms. There's this standard form, which is really helpful when we're looking at finding sides of our triangle. Because if we look, we've got these lowercase letters on the left-hand side all by themselves, and those lowercase letters represent sides. There's also this alternative form, which is basically just the standard form with some algebraic manipulations done to it to rearrange some things. And the alternative form is really helpful when we're looking to find measure of angles inside of our triangle because we've got angle information all by itself on the left-hand side. In this example, we're given triangle ABC. We've got all three sides of our triangle and we're gonna go through and find the three missing angles. So let's start with angle A. We're gonna use that alternative form of our law of cosines. So it says the cosine of angle A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. So if we plug in information from our triangle, side B is eight, so we're gonna go eight squared plus C is 12 squared minus A is gonna be six squared. And then on bottom, we've got two times eight times 12. If we look at simplifying some of this stuff down on top, we end up with 172. On bottom, we get 192. And then if we divide that stuff out, going to four decimals, we get 0.8958. Now that's the cosine of angle A. So in order to figure out what angle A is, we're gonna have to do an inverse cosine of our decimal point eight nine five eight and when we type that into our calculator we get about 26.4 degrees for angle a if we do something similar for angle b let's use the one that says cosine of b equals a squared plus c squared minus b squared all over 2ac plugging information in from our triangle we've got 6 squared plus 12 squared minus 8 squared all over two times six times 12. Simplifying this down a little bit on top, we have 116. On bottom, we have 144. Dividing that out, we get 0 0.8056. So that's the cosine of B. We will need to do an inverse cosine in order to figure out how big the angle is. So inverse cosine of 0 0.8056 and we get angle B to be about 36.3 degrees. Now we've got two angles inside of our triangle. We don't have to do more law of cosines to find the third angle. We can just use what we know about the angles inside of a triangle. So subtract the two angles we have away from 180 and angle C should be at about 117.3 degrees. Next example is very similar to that last one. We've got three sides and we're gonna find our three angles. I'm gonna start with angle A, so we're gonna go cosine of angle A is equal to B squared, which is 19 squared, plus our C squared value would be 14 squared, minus that A squared value, so eight squared, all over two times 19 times 14. If we look at simplifying this down on top, we end up with 493. On bottom, we get 532, dividing that stuff, we get 0.9267, and if we do the inverse cosine, we end up with angle A being 22.1 degrees. Doing similar things for angle B, let's go cosine of B equals our A squared value plus that C squared value minus B squared all over two times A times C, and we're gonna simplify this down. On top, we get negative 101. On bottom, we get 224. And then dividing those, we get negative 0.4509. And if we do our inverse cosine of that, we get angle B to be 116.8 degrees. And then using what we know about the angles inside of a triangle, since we've got two angles, we can just subtract those from 180, and angle C ends up being 41.1 degrees. This next example looks a little bit different because instead of being given all three sides, we've got two sides and an angle. And we're gonna go through and find the missing side and the missing angles. First thing I'm gonna do is find the missing side A. So we're gonna use the formula that says A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 
2 times B times C times the cosine of angle A. Plugging information in from our picture, side B is 16 squared plus C is 12 squared minus 2 times 16 times 12 times the cosine of our 80 degree angle. If we type that entire right hand side into our calculator, it's 333.32, but that's a squared. We don't want a squared, we want just a, so we'll have to do a square root of this, and when we do that, we should get about 18.3. Now if we start working on those angles, let's do angle B. So we'll go cosine of angle B equals, we just found our a side, that's 18.3 squared, plus our C value is 12 squared, minus that B value is 16 squared, all over two times our A value, 18.3, times our C value, 12. Simplifying this down on top, we end up with 222.89, and on bottom, we get 439.2, and then if we divide that stuff, we end up with 0.5075, and then doing the inverse cosine of that, we get angle B to be 59.5 degrees. Then we've got two angles inside of our triangle. If we use what we know about the angles, angle C would end up being 40.5 degrees. This example is very similar to the last one. I'm gonna start off by finding that side A. So we've got A squared equals, our B squared value would be 15 squared plus that c squared value is 10 squared, and then minus two times 15 times 10 times the cosine of our 115 degree angle. If we type the right hand side into our calculator, we get 451.79, and then we'll have to square root that in order to find our a value. And when we do that, we get about 21.3 for side a. Now let's go ahead and find angle B. So we're gonna go cosine of B equals our 21.3 squared plus 10 squared minus 15 squared all over two times our 21.3 times 10. On top, we end up with 328.69 and on bottom, we get 426. Dividing this out, we get 0.7716 and then doing the inverse cosine, angle B ends up being 39.5 degrees. Now we've got two angles inside of our triangle, so our missing angle C must be 25.5 degrees. Now let's say we had two sides of our triangle. Let's say we had side A and we had side B, and we wanted to go through and find side C using this law of cosines. Well, we would have to know how big angle C was, and let's suppose that it was a 90 degree angle. Then in order to find side C, we would plug in whatever our A squared value is, and we'd plug in whatever our B squared value is, minus two times A times B. Now the cosine of C is just zero, and if we take zero times all of this stuff on the end, that ends up just canceling out, and what we're left over is this C squared equals A squared plus B squared thing, and we should all recognize that as our Pythagorean theorem. Last thing we're looking at doing is determining if we would use our law of sines or law of cosines based on the setup of our triangle to go through and solve it. In order to use our law of sines, we need opposite pieces of information. So if we have an angle, we would need its opposite side. Otherwise, we're gonna have to use our law of cosines. So if we look at this first picture, A, we've got this 120 degree angle, but we don't know the side across from it. So this one would be a law of cosines problem. If we look at letter B, we've got this 50 degree angle down here and we do have its opposite sides. So this is a case where we could use the law of sines to help us out. Similarly with letter C, we've got this 35 degree angle and its opposite side. So this would be a law of sines problem. On letter D, we don't have any of the angles. So this one is gonna be a law of cosines problem. That's gonna be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.